women world leaders, educated at Oxford. The series. Part two, Margaret Thatcher. Hi, I'm Rob Walters, your guide and presenter. Welcome back to the Rob's Oxford channel and to the continuation of the Women World Leaders series. Following on from the first part of Women World Leaders Educated at Oxford, here again is the note written to Indira Gandhi's son. It was actually written by Margaret Thatcher, our next world leader. Margaret Roberts was born in 1925. Her father, Alfred, owned a grocery shop and was a local alderman and a Methodist preacher in the town of Grantham in Lincolnshire in England, where she grew up. She was educated in the English grammar school system here she is at 13 years old. She excelled there and so was encouraged to apply to Oxford University. Her college was Somerville, where she studied chemistry from 1943 through to 1947. I've already mentioned that college in the Indira Gandhi part. Here is a reminder of the frontage, but I'm following that by a picture of the library rather nice. Then a peek inside the dining hall, also nice. And finally, a view of the inside of the chapel. A little austere, but still very pleasant. Whilst at Oxford, she was an enthusiastic member of the university's Conservative Association, and she became its president. In her fourth year, which when studying science in Oxford is spent doing research, she was supervised by Dorothy Hodgkin, the very first woman from the UK to be awarded a Nobel Prize in Science for her work on the structure of penicillin and vitamin B12. Her specialism was X-ray crystallography, and this was the subject of Margaret's thesis. Here they are on the cover of a book that I wrote about them where I imagine the conversations that might have taken place between the youthful conservative student and her mature socialist supervisor. Political chemistry indeed. Following a brief career as a research assistant, she married Dennis Thatcher, had twins, then studied law, qualifying as a barrister in 1953 specialising in taxation. Always interested in politics, she became a Conservative Member of Parliament in 1959, soon rising to ministerial positions and finally becoming the first woman Prime Minister of the UK in 1979. She held this position through to 1990 and was the first British Prime Minister to possess a science degree. Here she is just before her election, stoutly defending a woman's right to rule. I know that one or two men are prejudiced, but after all, their prejudice is really so, so ridiculous that doesn't deal with it. No argument will deal with prejudice, but some people are prejudiced. I mean, I say to some of them sometimes, my goodness, it's as well you didn't live in the time of Queen Elizabeth I, isn't it? After all, I wonder if we should have grown to such a fantastic nation if we hadn't had people like her. The lows of Margaret Thatcher's political career were the angry resistance felt by many at the withdrawal of free milk to school children. She was called Margaret Thatcher Milk Snatcher and the unsuccessful attempts to establish a poll tax or community charge. Her many achievements are probably topped by her success in wresting the Falkland Islands back from Argentina in 1982. Plus her controversial sell-off of state industries to the private sector. She had good relations with many leaders of other countries, including Jimmy Carter, Indira Gandhi, Mikhail Gorbachev, and particularly a strong bond to Ronald Reagan in the United States. They met 
many times and there certainly did seem to be a genuine bond of friendship between them. I think you might sense that in the next clip. A great honour to be your last official guest after eight historic years of your presidency, one of the greatest in America's history. <clears throat> It's an opportunity to affirm anew the deep friendships, not only between ourselves, but between the British and American peoples. An opportunity to salute all that you have accomplished over these eight years on behalf of this great nation and of free people everywhere. Most British Prime Ministers from Oxford University have been awarded an honorary degree, but this was not to be for Margaret Thatcher. The 1,000 strong congregation which makes the decision in Oxford assembled in the Sheldonian and overwhelmingly voted her down. This is probably why her archive is held at a Cambridge college, not an Oxford one. However, her college of Somerville did make her an honorary fellow. They've also established a Margaret Thatcher centre in the college and created a scholarship trust in her name. She resigned as Prime Minister in 1990 following a rather bloody dispute over the leadership within her Conservative Party. Here's a clip from her final parliamentary appearance as Prime Minister. Mr Speaker, would the Prime Minister be good enough to tell us which of the policies that she leaves to her successor she now thinks should be scrapped? I am happy that my successor will carry on the excellent policies that in fact have finished with the decline of socialism and have brought great prosperity to this country, which have raised Britain's standing in the world and in fact have brought about a truly capital-owning democracy. After her retirement, she gave a number of lectures, and here is a picture of one such occasion in Salt Lake City, USA. She spoke at a technology-oriented conference there. Who is that chap with the beard behind her? Yes, it's me. And there's a story behind that. In 2013, Margaret Thatcher died of a stroke at the Ritz Hotel in London at the age of 87. There were those who celebrated her end, but I believe the last word should be left to her college of Somerville. You can read them for yourselves. The Iron Lady was no more. So Margaret died, but she did live to a ripe old age in comparison with our other women world leaders, as you will see. Question once again, did her stay in Oxford influence her life? A very full life, a life of someone who became very famous, not just in the United Kingdom, but worldwide? I would say yes. For a start, she had a scientific education, which is fairly unusual for members of Parliament of the United Kingdom, and certainly unusual in a Prime Minister. She had that, and she kept in touch with her college. Uh, she kept in touch with Dorothy Hodgkin, even invited her up to Chequers, the Prime Minister's residence, to advise her on science in in Russia. Did Oxford influence her politics? I would say not at all. <laughs> um, she was a conservative before she went there and she was very much a conservative while she was there and spent her whole life as a very staunch conservative. Okay, well there's one more in this series to come so do subscribe so that we let you know when that one comes, it will be quite soon. And that's it for Margaret Thatcher as a woman world leader. Thanks for watching.
Goodbye.